Okay, good. Let's get started. Um, well, hello, traders. Welcome to part one of volume spread analysis. Um, this webinar will be an introduction to VSA, where we'll discuss a couple of examples of how it can be used in your trading. Um, we're talking about how you can incorporate volume spread analysis into your existing technical analysis when looking for trade opportunities, and also how you can use it for additional confirmations, which is quite useful. Um, VSA is something I want you to all start to practice with on all of your trade setups. It's a hugely important area of market analysis that will really complement the current technical analysis you're already doing. Um, and you'll soon start to see how important it is when you're reading market activity. Okay. So why is volume important when we're looking at the market? So Analyzing volume provides a huge advantage to traders, yet it is often overlooked by the majority of participants. I was looking online and I saw that over 90% of retail traders completely ignore volume and focus solely on technical analysis. So volume analysis can actually help your trading to develop an edge on top of your technical analysis. Um, so these are the four key benefits that you'll find by using volume in your trading. Number one is, is a non-lagging indicator. Some of you may know what that is already, um, but by looking at volume, we can access immediate data from the markets in real time. Most of the indicators we're currently using are lagging, as you probably all know. So if we can master an indicator which is non-lagging, this could provide us with a good edge over other participants, potentially over 90% of retail guys. Number two, the indication of activity of larger players in a market is shown through their volume. So all of us want to know, right, what the bigger players are doing in this market. They leave no trace of what they're up to on the markets, apart from one thing, that's their trading volume. They can't hide that completely. They've got ways of hiding certain elements through dark pools and so forth, but they can't hide all of it. It's the big players in the markets that move the markets, obviously not you or I. So if we can understand when they step in, it might help us understand where they want prices to go and so that we can trade in the same direction as them, not against them. Number three, identify the strength of trends and when they are losing momentum. So this is key, right? Um, an analogy on the next slide will help you understand what I mean here. But essentially, we need to understand how much energy there is in each move and when that energy is running out or beginning to change direction. Finally, changes in volume tend to lead to price changes. So as I've just mentioned, if we can understand when momentum changes, we can better understand when prices might begin to change as well. OK, so key points there and why it's important. So I like this analogy. This is how I want you to start to think about volume in the markets. So consider a car going up the hill. Your volume is the accelerator of the car, so the gas that's being applied. The price movement is the actual car motion. And the universal level of resistance to support is the actual hill. So let's think about that. If the car is expected to keep going up a steep hill, do you think gently pressing the accelerator would do the job? The forward motion of the car going up the hill can't possibly be long lasting unless there is more power or gas applied. What if you were to press the accelerator to its maximum capacity, yet the car motion is still stagnant going up the hill? That should be a huge clue to you that there is sufficient resistance, i.e. selling pressure, that requires further gas, or what we would call buying volume. Hopefully now you should be able to understand how volume can help us understand the strength of moves or trends or when momentum is falling and where reversal may take place. We'll explain more, explain more with some examples later on to, to highlight that in a bit more detail. Okay, tick volume. We've all heard of it. We all know what it is. It's on a lot of our charts. But the big question is, is it useful? Um, in Forex, there's no centralized exchange where we can access total traded volume, unlike the institutions have in the futures markets, whether that's CME or, or whatever, is a centralized exchange with very clear volume. Instead, what we have is tick data, which is provided by some of the major brokers. But what is it? As we can see on the slide, uh, the definition is it measures the number of times the price ticks up and down. Right, so it measures the number of times that the price ticks up and down. So that's obviously not the same as traded volume, right? Traded volume is how much is actually traded. So the assumption here with tick volume is that if prices change 100 times, for example, in five minutes, that there's a higher activity than if prices changes only 50 times. And this should reflect the corresponding change in trading volume. 
I hope that makes sense. Um, however, and contrary to that, what if you had a period of extremely high selling volume matched by extremely high buying volume? So almost even buying and selling that would keep the price fairly stable. Would this show up on tick volume as much as in actual traded volume? Obviously, if you've got matching buyers and sellers of the same amount of volume, you might not think prices is changing as much as it would do with actual traded volume. So the question is whether tick volume represents a good reflection of actual traded volume in the Forex market. And this has been one of the issues why most tech traders don't use it, right? Because they think it is actually useless. They think it's no reflection of trading volume. So a huge proportion of traders don't even look at it. So let's have a look. So here we've got the correlation between tick volume and actual traded volume. So there was some research published back in 2011 by Casper Marni, who is quite an experienced Forex trader, worked at UBS and HSBC. And he was one of the first to debunk the myths of limited usefulness of tick volume in spot Forex markets. Um, I will send you all a link to the research um, in the Slack afterwards. So you can have a look for yourself. But he concluded that existence of strikingly high levels of accuracy between tick, ac tick activity and actual traded volume which vindicates the importance of tick data. So if we look on our right, you've got the four currency pairs there. Um, you've got the correlation coefficients all above 90%. So, you know, that shows there's a 90% correlation between tick volume and actual trader volume, which is which is great, right? So, you know, it's, it's crazy that so many people don't actually look at volume and tick data in their trading. Um, you can see in a little box at the bottom, not sure if you can see my cursor, but over here, from our analysis of these four currency pairs, we would postulate that over 90% of movement in tick volume in any currency pair is reflected in the movement of actual traded volume. I.e., if tick volume is seen to be increasing, traded volume will be increasing in a very similar manner. Now, there's lots of other research online supporting this study and lots of other independent studies which show an extremely high correlation. You can just search it into Google, you'll see a lot come up. So I think from this and other research, we can safely assume that tick volume is a good representation of actual trader volume. So how can we use it? So here is a good indicator which I use, which I recommend all of you guys get into your trading view. It's called Volume Spread for VSA. Um, and it's a, it's a good indica indicator which shows you how the relative change in volume between bars is happening. And this is what we're interested in, right? We're interested in the relative change in volume, not the absolute number. We couldn't care less what the absolute number is. It's how it changes between bars. Um, so you've got the different color bars there. You've got the red, which is the ultra high volume, um, and the yellow, which is high volume, uh, green average and blue low. So you can see them quite clearly on that and they'll be at the bottom of your trading view chart. So I recommend pulling that up if you haven't already. I know a few of you have. Um, and trying to see how we can use that in our analysis. So let's move on. Yes, how to use it. How can we use this volume indicator with our with our price candlesticks? So what we're looking to analyze here is the spread of the price candle, which is this bit over here, okay, between a close and the open, the spread of the price candle with the size of the volume bar, which is down here. Um, yeah, the spread of the size of the body of the candle, the difference between open and close. And we're looking to compare the size of the spread to the volume. So here we can see the volume on this particular candle and we can see it's quite a small spread. So here we can see high volume on a green candle that has a small candle spread. We can safely say that there is considerable selling pressure coming into the green candle that is almost matching the buying volume, reducing the size of the candle spread and causing a high relative volume compared to previous candles. Right, so this candle was, this volume candle was much higher than the previous, but look at the size of the body. The spread of that candle is actually smaller than this one. Right, so this shows there's been a, although it is a green bar, uh, a green candle, there's considerable selling coming into that, almost matching the buying, not quite, because it's an, it's an up candle, uh, which has caused all this trading volume. So this could be quite an interesting error for us, right? So this could be what could be known as a reversal lots of selling pressure coming in at this price. We can see a high trading volume. What does that tell us about what might happen to the price? So here are three areas which are of interest to us. We want to, if we see high volume on a small candle spread, which we've just shown, that's quite interesting. Um, what does that mean? We'll go into that later. Um, another area of interest, high volume on a high candle spread. 
Okay, so if we see a relatively high volume on a green candle with a large candle spread, so the price has moved quite a lot, we can assume that there are not many sellers entering the market here acting as resistance, helping prices rise at a faster right, rate, right? So you might have two uh, volume candles next to each other exactly the same height, but the spread of the candles could be completely different. And it's understanding what that tells us about market participants that's going to be key in understanding how to use VSA. Okay, one of the first examples I wanted to talk you through, um, which hopefully will be quite easy for you to understand, is reversals. So here we've got a simple chart. And what I mean by reversal, just when a price is approaching a key support or resistance level, could be a resistance or support, and we're looking for any signs that it may reverse back down. Um, so these are three key things we're looking at using VSA to help give us an indication if that's likely to happen. Number one, we're looking for decreasing volume, which could be seen as a move running out of steam as the price approaches areas of support resistance. So just think about that, right? So as we're approaching that support resistance level, we want to see volume decreasing. You know, it's running out of energy. So that should give us an indication that perhaps it may get stopped at that support or resistance level. In addition to that, we then want to see areas of high or ultra high volume on small candle spreads. Now, if you remember, higher ultra high volume is either yellow or red bars on the VSA indicator in conjunction with a small candle spread. In addition to that, we want to see high volume with widespread bars moving away from the area of support resistance. So the first one we just talked about, why we want to see decreasing volume, we want to see the move moving out of steam running out of energy. Part two, we want to see higher ultra high volume on small candle spread. So that's where, for example, if we're in an uptrend and we're approaching a level of resistance, where we're going to start seeing lots of selling coming into that level. So that the spread of the price candle may actually be quite small, but you'll notice that there's a lot of volume there, right? So there must be selling coming into that, matching the buying, which is causing volume to spike, which should give you an indication that perhaps the tide's beginning to change. There's some selling pressure coming in. Um, and finally, the high volume with widespread bars moving away from the area, right? So this is the confirmation we're looking for, that perhaps the move is moving away from that level, so the reversal is happening. When we start to see energy, I'm, I'm using energy for volume, energy move away from that level of support and resistance, we know that larger players have kind of bought into that move and that we want to be trading on the same size as them. Okay, so here's an example we've got on Aussie CAD. Um, I found this yesterday um, and let me talk you through what we're looking at here. So on the 7th, if you look at the 7th, we see high volume at the beginning of the move lower. Just what I've got start of the move lower on high volume on the chart just over here. So there's high volume at the bottom on this red candle, which shows us there's a lot of supply coming in, m helping push the move lower. That shows that there's interest from institutions, the guys that move the markets, not you and I, to, for prices to move lower here. These are the guys that are causing this volume and the price to move lower. So this should give us some indication that there's now energy flowing downwards. I'm trying to keep it simple for now so you guys understand, but there's energy flowing downwards towards this level of support, which was previously resistance. Yeah, it's now becoming support. So if, if prices were around here and we, we don't know what's happening in the future, we already know this may be a level of support in the future. It was a previous resistance level. And we want to see if there's going to be interest for the institution to push the price lower. So we see the red candle, we see high volume. Great, okay, prices are moving towards the support level. As price approaches the support, we see decreasing volume, which is shown by this white line over here. You can see that volume is slowly decreasing with volume bars going from green down to blue. This should tell us that the down move is running out of steam, right? So we've got high volume up here at the beginning of the move. People are selling as the price is moving lower. We see volume come down. So there's now less interest in prices to go much lower. There's not much selling left. We then start to see over here a huge volume candle, right? So it's, it's a lot of, it's a yellow bar, high volume on a relatively narrow spread candle. So if we look at the actual price candle over here, it's quite narrow. But look at the size of the volume versus all these other volume candles, volume bars. This one over here, the size of this sp spread of the candle, and there's hardly any volume. 
to get that moving down there. So this should be an area of interest for us, right? So this means that now there's buyers stepping in, right? To get all this volume with not much price movement, there's still obviously a lot of selling coming in here, but there's clearly buyers as well, which are stopping the price from moving significantly. So this is an area of interest, which could help us understand if we're gonna see a reversal, um, which as it turns out happened, right? So we did see that. So there were buyers coming in, this was an area of interest. Um, and we start to see the price pick up. Um, okay, so when we start to see the high yellow volume on a relatively narrow spread candle, this indicates to us that the buyers are now stepping in as we just discussed. Now, if we move over across the chart over to this section, which is a bit more clear for us, and this kind of matches more what we've just said in what we're looking for in these reversals, look at the size of the volume down here. I mean, versus, as we discussed earlier, we're looking, we can see the volume reduce down with the white line here. It's going from green to blue as prices approach the support level again. And then we see a huge amount of volume. So ultra high volume on, on three of these bars and high volume uh, in the middle of those, um, which is showing us there's a lot of activity here, right? So as prices are approaching the support level uh, after about 12 p.m. on the 9th, um, we see the two bars of ultra high volume in red with the second candle with a relatively narrow spread so if we look over here, this is a relatively narrow spread. And this, this has got a red bar, a red volume bar on quite narrow spread as well. So this shows there's a huge amount of buying volume coming in here on each of these price candles on this one, this one, and this one, which again would give you an indication that prices are turning around, right? There's less interest for institutions to go lower here, volume's ticking down, and volume's picking up when we're approaching support. So we would then expect buyers are stepping in, and this final green bar, I mean, if you look at the volume, absolutely pushes the price very high up here, although the volume is actually quite similar to the previous bars. But look at the difference in price. This is what we want to see as confirmation of the move higher after this reversal. Now, I understand there's a lot to take in there, but what's important is that you're noticing how price and volume is acting when you're approaching these levels of support and resistance. Um, this is an example where we can see the reversal, and here we get the additional confirmation after the reversal that the prices are moving higher. Okay, so that was one example. And the second one, we're looking at pullbacks. Um, so here's just a quick example of what I mean when we're in a trending market, whether that's down or up, how to identify when we're seeing a pullback. Um, so with these markets, we're looking for a trending market, so you can draw your support and resistance, whether that's down or up. We're looking for high volume in the direction of the trend with widespread candles, followed by low volume on the pullback. OK, so that's high volume in the direction of the trend with widespread candles with low volume on the pullback. So let's see what an example of that looks like. So here we've got dollar CAD clearly in a downtrend. Um, and I've grayed out the areas where we see moves in the direction of the trend coupled with high or ultra high volume. Okay, so here we've got some, some uh, large price candles coupled with volume, high volume, high volume, move downwards. These are all in the direction of the trend with levels of high volume. Um, in between these shaded areas, we see the pullbacks, which are shown by the arrows. We can see that on these pullbacks, as I've shown by this decreasing white line, that volume is actually decreasing. So in between these moves in the direction of the trend, we're seeing greater volume. This is where institutions are selling into the pullbacks. But when the pullbacks begin, the volume reduces. Right, so it's understanding how we can read these, these market activity and, and try and enter on those pullbacks. That's exactly what institutions are doing. Here, the, here we see a pullback. And then we see a huge amount of selling coming down to the level of support. Again, pullback, look at the volume, just absolutely reduced down to the blues. And as we see some more activity, big move down on higher volume, and we'll keep seeing that. Now, obviously, when we're seeing these trending markets, they're not always as clear as this, but I mean, this was, I don't know what date this was. This wasn't too long ago. Um, so they, they are quite obvious to see, these pullbacks. So if we can understand when we're in a trending market, here we know that institutions are selling into this trend. Um, we can see that by the volume, they can't hide that. 
and we can also identify when what a pullback is like to happen. We can see that it's a pullback because volume is reducing. So we want to wait until volume picks up on those down moves and trade in the same direction as the institutions. Um, that's a very brief overview of this chart. And again, it, you know, I am running through this quite quickly, so don't worry if you don't understand all of it. Um, this is part one, there will be further parts. And you can always approach me to ask me some questions about this. But this is some really interesting stuff, guys, that you need to use in your trading, right? If you're not looking at this volume, you're missing a huge piece of the puzzle, which will really get, let you understand what these institutions are doing in these markets. What, what are they doing? What, what's their thought process? In which direction are they trading? You want to trade in the same direction as them. Um, so that's the two examples there. The next step, next part of this is I'd like you guys to actually... Uh, post one trade setup where you're using volume as a confirmation indica indicator to identify a reversal. So I don't care which market it is, cryptocurrency or FX, I would like you to look at the charts to try and identify those reversals in conjunction with those changes in volume as we discussed. Um, once you start to identify those patterns, I think it will make it easier for you to incorporate those into your trading. Um, so if you could each post one of those into the trading room Slack um, over the next week, that would be great. I'll give you feedback on them. Um, and that's pretty much it for this. It's only short and sweet to cover VSA. It's a half hour quick webinar. Um, part two will follow where we're going into a lot more detail, where we're going to look at how to identify market tests. Market tests are when we see price spikes on very low volume, which is when institutions are trying to see if there's interest for the prices to go higher or lower and how to spot those breakouts, how we can use volume to identify the strength of a breakout, make sure it's not a fake out, and some other market movements. But I thought this would be a good place to start, get you comfortable with how to look at volume, and we can pick it up from there. Um, any immediate questions, post them into the trading Slack channel. Um, but that's it for me, guys. So any questions, let me know, and we'll catch up next time. Thanks a lot.